So we are going to look at a special case here. We're going to look at what happens when we have a linear relationship. And I'm going to find another linear relationship that when I graph these two relationships, the new one will be perpendicular to this. So this forms a line. And I want to know what other line is going to be perpendicular to that. Or at least what's the slope of a line that's perpendicular to that. And now remember we have different ways to uh, formulate the slope of, or the um, equation for a line. We have point slope form or the point intercept form. And what happens is in practice is we pick which one is advantageous for the, what we need at a given time. And it's going to turn out that this is one's going to be a little more uh, e easier to use in this particular case. So what's the idea? So we assume I'm given this line and I want to find the line perpendicular to that. Let's look at this as a graphically first. So we suppose we have this line. Okay. Now, I want to find a line that's perpendicular to this, but really all I care about is the slope. Uh, it turns out there's many different lines that are going to be perpendicular to this. Okay. I'm going to pick the one that happens to go through this point right here just because it's going to make the calculations a little bit easier. But if I can find the slope of that, the slope of any other uh, line that's perpendicular to that is going to have the same slope. So what are we going to have? I'm going to pick a line that goes through the same point when x equals 0. Okay? And we're going to call this a line with slope p, and because it goes to that same point, it has to have the same intercept. So the formula for this is y equals px plus b. And I'm going to, I'm assuming that I'm given m, and the question is, is what is p given that other information? Okay. All right. And what's important here is that because this is perpendicular, that's a right angle. And here's the trick. Let me just pick some value for x. I'm going to draw a straight line, a straight vertical line through these two points. This is going to be the point y, or sorry, x, and x plus b. This is going to be x, and then px plus b. Okay. Now what we have here is a right triangle. And because it's a right triangle, that has side length A, that has side length B, and that has C. I know the Pythagorean theorem is true. So what I'm going to do is this. So I'm going to figure out this distance using the distance formula. That distance, that distance. I'm going to force that to be true. I'm going to get an equation. I'm going to solve it for P. And we're going to see what happens. Whatever we get for that, that's going to tell us what the slope is for this if we're given that information there. Okay. So what is A? Well, a squared is going to be, if I use the distance formula, it's going to be x minus 0 squared plus mx plus b. Right, so now this point here, keep in mind, is 0b. I'm going to subtract b squared. If I clean this up, this is going to be x squared. The b's cancel. So I get the quantity mx squared, so that's x squared plus m squared x squared. Now we're going to do the same thing for b squared and then c squared. So for b squared, this distance here, again we're going to use the distance formula. It's going to be x minus 0 squared, so what is this, this is px plus b. The y value here is b. So let's see, this becomes x squared. Now is b minus b is 0. So that's px quantity squared. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus p squared x squared. Finally, I'm going to use the distance formula to figure out what's going on with c. So notice this is x and this is x. So x minus x squared. I've got that y value. And I'm going to subtract this y value to get that. 
So let's see, x minus x is 0. 0 squared is 0. Oops, sorry, this is still plus. This is going to be mx plus b. If I carry that minus sign through, I get px minus b. Notice now I've got b minus b. So this becomes mx minus px squared. I can factor out the x there. So it has an x, that has an x. So I have the quantity m minus p times x all squared, which I can write as m minus p squared times x squared. Now notice here I'm assuming my x is not 0. So I can now take this thing is my a squared, this is my b squared, and that has a squared plus b squared has to equal c squared. So let's write that out and see what happens. So my a squared now is x squared plus m squared x squared. My b squared is x squared plus p squared x squared. Okay. And then my c squared equal to that. So let's clean this up, we'll play some algebra games, see what happens. Okay, notice my x I'm assuming is not zero and everything has an x squared so I can factor out the x squared from that term, that term, that term, that term, and it's already factored out here. Okay, and again, x is not 0, so I can divide that out from both sides. And let's see, what do I have here? I've got 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 2 plus m squared plus p squared plus m minus p quantity squared. Let's foil that out. squared minus 2mp plus p squared. Okay. So I can subtract m squared from both sides and subtract p squared from both sides and what do I get? I get m squared minus m squared is 0, p squared minus p squared is 0. Same thing happens there. So now I have 2 equals minus 2 mp. I can divide both sides by 2. What do I get? I get 1 equals minus m times p. And remember, I'm assuming I know what m is. I was given that. And my goal is to isolate p. So if I divide both sides by minus m, I get that p is equal to minus 1 over m. We have, we have p is equal to minus 1 over m. So if you give me the slope of this line, the slope of the line that's perpendicular to this does not matter what the b is, it only matters what the m is, and it's uh, found from this relationship here. Okay. So let's look at an example. is I want to find the line that's perpendicular to this line y minus 7 equals 4 times x minus 1. Um, and at this point, and I want that new line to go through the point 3 minus 6. Okay. 
so here's the thing. The slope of the original line is 4. So the slope of the line that's perpendicular to this is going to be minus 1 over that, or minus 1 fourth. And since it goes through this point, let's see, it's going to be y minus a minus 6, that's the y value. It's going to be the slope. Get that more better. This is going to be x minus 3. And so now this line is going to be perpendicular to that one. 